express sine raised to power four theta in terms of cosines of multiple of theta solution. Express sine raised to power four theta in terms of multiples of cosines of theta. So the first thing you go to the Moivre's theorem. So if you have z is exponential j theta. If you have z is exponential j theta, then that one is equal to cos theta plus j sin theta. If you raise both sides of the equation to power n, it means z raised to power n is exponential j n theta, which is equal to what? Cos theta plus j sin theta, all that raised to power n. So if that is raised to power n, you get cos n theta plus j sin n theta. So it means when you find the when you, you negate both sides of the equation, when you get z raised to negative, when you when you find again z raised to negative n will be exponential negative and j and theta, which will be cos theta plus j sine theta raised to negative n, which will give you cos negative n theta plus j sine negative n theta. If you use the, the symmetric identities, it will imply what? Cos negative n theta is the same as cos n theta. Sine negative n theta is the same as negative sine n theta. So we now have negative j sine n theta. Are you seeing that? So from the two equations we are now see, the first case we have z raised to power n is the same as cos n theta plus j sine n theta, isn't it? Then the second case of this equation, z raised to negative n is the same as 1 over z raised to power n. The fractional rule in EBC, isn't it? Yes. So 1 over z raised to power n is the same as cos n theta minus j sine n theta, as we've seen there, isn't it? Now what do we need? We need sine. Senior. So for us to get sine, it means we subtract the two equations, isn't it? So if we find the difference of the two equations, we will be left with sine. Senior. So the difference between two equations, zn minus 1 over zn is equal to negative j sine n theta minus j sine n theta is 2 j sine n theta. Because cos n theta minus cos n theta is 0, isn't it? Are we together? Now, from here you can now see, you can now see that if you have 2j sin n theta, that is the same as zn minus 1 over zn. Are we together? So you come and say, when n is equal to 1, so when there is 1n, you substitute with 1, isn't it? So when n is equal to 1, we get 2j sin theta is z minus 1 over Z. Are we together? You can now see that it's now very procedural, isn't it? So 2j sine beta we've now found to be z minus 1 over z. z. 1 over z. Remember when n is 1, meaning we are substituting n with 1, isn't it? So we now have 2 j sine theta is z minus 1 over z. But what do they need? They want us to express sine raised to power 4 theta in terms of the cosines of multiples of theta, isn't it? So for us to get sine raised to power 4 theta, it means we multiply both sides of this equation by 4, isn't it? So we raise both sides of this, we multiply both sides of this equation by 4, is when we'll be able to get sine 4 theta, isn't it? So you start multiplying, 2 raised to power 4 is what? 16. J, J, J raised to power 4 is 1. We see that when the, the, the power is an even, you get 1 or negative 1, isn't it? Yes. And if that even number is raised to power 4, then it is positive 1. See there? Yes. So it means J raised to power 4 is positive 1. So we have 16, then sine theta raised to power 4 is sine raised to power 4 theta. So we've simplified the left hand side of the equation, isn't it? Then on the other side of the equation is a, a binomial expansion, isn't it? So when n is raised to power 4, it implies 5 terms, isn't it? Yes. So it implies 5 terms. So 5 times you put, that is the first term plus the second term plus the third term plus the fourth term plus the fifth term. 
Then in the first bracket is Z, the first bracket is Z, the second bracket is negative 1 over Z, isn't it? Are you seeing that? Negative 1 over? 1 over Z, negative 1 over Z, negative 1 over Z. Then can you go and check the coefficients of when n is 4? The first one will be 4 combination 0, which is 1, isn't it? The second coefficient is 4 combination 1, which is 4. The third coefficient is 4 combination 2, which is 6. six. The fourth coefficient is 4 combination, combination 3, which is? Four. Which is 4. Then the last one, 4 combination 4, which is? Wow. So you place the coefficient, isn't it? Then you put the powers. Sadio, one power is ascending, the other one is? Descending, isn't it? So we now want to start, because we are going to have the z and to start followed by 1 over z, then we, we let the z powers to descend, isn't it? To make it look neat, isn't it? So z here, we start with power 4, then 3, then 2, then, then 0. That is, the, that is when we are able to get z minus 1 over z or z plus 1 over z, isn't it? Are we together? Very easily. Then, this one has descended, the other one ascends. So this other one starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So one power ascends, the other power descends. Then you simplify. Anything raised to power 0 is? Is 1. So this one is 1. Then z raised to power 0 is also 1. Are we together? Now start simplifying now. The ones with the same coefficients will be the same. We'll have the same power. So you see here is a coefficient of 1, we have z raised to power 4. We put them together, isn't it? Then there we have a coefficient of 1, we have negative 1 over z raised to power 4. A negative now, a ne negative raised to even power is positive. So negative raised to power 4 is going to be positive. Are we together? Then now, start simplifying. Here we have 1, z raised to power 4 is z raised to power 4. Then 1, negative 1 over z raised to power 4 is going to be positive 1 over z raised to power 4. See there? Because negative raised to a little number is 4. Positive. Is that okay? So you join, you move to the next coefficient is 4. Collect the ones with the coefficient of 4. So we have plus 4. Then you start. z raised to power 3 z raised to power 3 times negative 1 over z raised to power 1 is just negative 1 over z, isn't it? So if you simplify that, you get negative z raised to power 2, isn't it? You get negative, negative z squared. Then go to the other one with power 4, you get z times negative 1 over z raised to power 3, so you will get minus 1 over z squared, isn't it? If you simplify it, because it is z over z cube, negative z over z cube, which is negative 1 over z squared, isn't it? Are we together? Then you move again, so that is my coefficient of 4. Then the one without a partner is the constant, isn't it? So for a coefficient of 6, it is just plus 6. Because z squared and negative 1 over z squared will give you 1, isn't it? z squared times negative 1 over z squared, negative squared is positive. So you get z squared times 1 over z squared, you remain with 1. So there, 1 times 6, 6 remains as a constant, isn't it? Are we together? So from there, you can now see here, negative is a common factor in this middle bracket. So we can factorize out a common factor, isn't it? So there we now have 1 into z raised to power 4 plus 1 over z raised to power 4, then minus 4 into z square plus 1 over z square plus 6. So we factorize out the negative. Are you seeing that in the middle term? See there? Are you seeing that middle part? Yes. Negative is a common. So from there you now see, we found that, remember we found that 2, 2, 2 j sin n theta is z n minus 1 over z then, isn't it? And for the case of course, you add the two equations, isn't it? So when you add the two equations, you will get 2 cos n theta is z n plus 1 over z n. Are we clear? So if you look here, we have z4 plus 1 over z4, meaning our n is 4, see there? Our n is our n is 4. So if n is 4, we are going to have 2 cos 4 
cos for theta. theta. Because it is supposed to be 2 cos n theta to be equal to zn plus 1 over zn. Are we together? Yes. So where there is n, we substitute by it with four zero. Yes. So it means when we substitute for where n is, we are going to have 2 cos 4 theta to be z to the power 4 plus 1 over z to the power 4. Isn't it? Then plus minus 4 into z power 2 plus 1 over z to the power 2 is 2 cos 2 theta. Meaning where there is n, we put 2. Are we together? You move on. Plus plus 6. Then this is the left hand side of the equation we had 16 sine raised to power 4 theta. Isn't it? The left hand side of the equation we had 16 sine raised to power 4 theta. But they don't need 16 sine raised to power 4 theta. They need sine raised to power 4 theta. Meaning you divide both sides of the equation by 16. 16. So 16 all through by 16. We divide all through by 16. So 16 goes with 16. We remain with sine raised to power 4 theta is equal to 1 times 2 is 2. 2 divided by 16 is 1 over 8. So we have 1 over 8 cos 4 theta. Are we together? Yes. Then we have minus 4 times 2 is 8 divided by 16. You get 1 over 2 cos 2 theta. Then plus 6 divided by 16, you get 3 over 8. Are we together? So have you seen you've now expressed you've now expressed sine raised to power 4 theta in terms of cosine of multiples of theta? Are we together? So these are in terms of cosines of multiple of theta because you can see here is cos 4 theta. 4 theta meaning 4 times theta 4 a multiple of theta, isn't it? Then we have cos 2 theta. 2 theta means a multiple of Theta. So that is how to express sine raised to power 4 theta in terms of a multiple of theta using the De Moivre theorem.